November 3rd, 2014, CPDC. Um, so I assume everyone in the crowd, all three of you, are here for the uh, Summer Ave Historic District. Hey, I've heard a few things about this work. So um, we're going to take things out of order and deal with that first and, um, you know, get you in, get you out. So first up for our agenda today, review and provide a recommendation on the preliminary report for proposed Summer Avenue Local Historic District. So Jean or Jesse, any introduction you want to provide with regards to this? Um, I guess basically that um, we wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to consider this. Um, the report was submitted and uh, the state has um, acknowledge that as far as I could tell everything's in order um, and they said that they voted on October 8th to acknowledge receipt of the preliminary study report this is mass historical uh, for the summer Ave local historic district and it looks like as far as the state's concerned it's all set and then it's just the report and it will be on a uh, subsequent town meeting November 2014, which starts November 10th, and it is Article 9. nine. <coughs> After the beast of um, Article 8, but I, we just had a pre-town meeting, and um, the moderator and town council were thinking if they could, they might like to um, take Article 9 the first night on November 10th. So that if that works out, then it would just be the second night would be the 13th, would be um, Article 7 and Article 8, the two zoning articles. But um, that's where we're at. Town meeting has it as a Warren article. What's 7? That PRD? The PRD, yeah. Okay. Yep. That was a while ago. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'll give all of you an opportunity if you want to introduce the topic, give a brief overview, and then we can discuss it. Well, I'm Eric Blodgett, the chair of the West Street Historic District, and under our general bylaw of 7.3, um, we are entitled uh, as the West Street Historic District, already being established about nine to 10 years ago, are entitled to expand our district either by making it small or reduce our district or set up other districts. So basically, it would be operating under the same bylaw with a, a few minute changes, such as names and maps. And um, we have been working to uh, set up that district. Uh, we've met all the dates, due dates, up through the public hearing. And I had um, sent this to you uh, August 14th, assumed that it would be on the agenda at some point. I spoke to Justin the other day, and I said, I guess we ought to make sure it goes on the agenda just so because I also sent you the copy. I don't know exactly why those are the two requirements. One goes to the state, one goes to you uh, as the preliminary report. And, uh, so um, updated, it's uh, a district on Summer Ave. It goes about from uh, Ruben Street to uh, Glen Road. It contains about 25 properties. Um, and the district itself is very much in favor of having the historical um, reservations put on it, the bylaw put onto it. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, we feel that uh, the town is very much, as generally is very much in favor of it happening. And so for all sorts of different reasons. Uh, one of them being traffic <laughs> on that area. Um, because of proposed um, activity that wants to go in on one of the sites. Um, there's concern about traffic, there's concern about demolition, there's concern about new buildings going up. And so that's why we're moving also within the realm of Chapter 40C gives us that right. Okay. So this doesn't prevent that from happening, if I'm not mistaken, but it puts a lot more constraints in place, if I'm not mistaken? Well, review, uh, I don't know. I think there's going to be some issues. Yeah. Uh, basically, what is in effect at this particular point is a demolition delay enacted by the Historical Commission. Uh, that demolition delay ends January 24th. Um, in my interpretation, without any, no, anybody else involved at this particular point, is that 
they do not have a demolition permit. So there's nothing to grandfather because the delay will run out, but they can't get the permit until the delay runs out. <coughs> and uh, demolition permit is, a, is by the owner of the property at the time after the demolition delay. So if the historic district were to go in before the permit were issued, it uh, seems by my logic that you'd have some control on what demolition you could put on the property, uh, or any of the properties as far as that's concerned, and also some controls on what goes up for new buildings or additions on the, uh, on any of the properties, as well as all, any of the other bylaw rulings. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. No, <laughs> I understand. It's a bit of an unfair question, but... Yeah. Well, it's I just that's my interpretation. Your, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. So, any comments from the board? It's funny because I'm familiar with all these properties just from say walking or running past them, but when you catalog them like this, it really hits home how great these these buildings are. Yeah, from the 1840s and 50s, most of them were in this. Uh, Older, uh, at least one. Um, that that road is that street is there as Summer Street. It's actually Summer Ave now. It's an official change, even though people call it Summer Street. It's still Summer. It's now Summer Ave. Uh, it's on the 1765 map. That's an old street, and the uh, the properties were much larger. The houses, some of them that are there, then uh, allowed to develop because of splitting some of those lots um, and. Uh, they're beautiful houses. They're well set back away from the street, except for maybe one or two. And um, just wonderful. They really are. Yeah. Have we had any legal opinion or anybody look at this and, and agree with your interpretation of it? Well, I believe town council is looking at it. Um, there's no question about the fact that if they are a a criterion wants to move in on one of the properties um, if they are covered by the Dover Amendment, which is from uh, I think the 70s, I'm guessing 50s, 70s, someplace in there. They have the town has much less control over what they can do if it's for educational or religious reasons. And I believe if you have got a chance to clip at the tonight's paper, there's been interpretations by one lawyer that they are. They are not covered by the Dover Amendment because they are a business. Um, mm -hmm. And um, town council has a, is due to rule on it shortly. So we'll be yeah. They don't agree. Seven four, I guess. I don't know what happens. It seems like there might be an opportunity. I don't know if there's an opportunity, but I mean, do you think you would expand? beyond Summer Ave and introduce other historic districts? Well, when the initial historic district of West Street went in, um, it went in under what we call a little bit of stress because of Archstone, now the Reading Commons uh, development coming in on one end. There was projection of the uh, John, um, the long, long John, yeah, Johnson, Woods. Johnson Woods in that area. That was projected up there. I think there are other creations that have come since then, that Ruben project that's on the far end of West Street, um, actually far end of West Street. The situation is that at the time we were seeing uh, the possibility of other areas. Reading is very much by its own charter a, um, by the master plan, a, um, a town of neighborhoods. Uh, really, you have the neighborhoods and then you have the center of town. It's basically the way it's set up. There's a few exceptions, uh, Walker's Brook now and stuff like that. but. Um, I think down the road, people were projecting that there would be other districts, except uh, it took 18 months to two years to get that one in. Mm -hmm. Well, people were kind of tired, and they just didn't do it. And most of these are created under some sort of a stress or crisis right. wanting it to happen, and that's what's happened in this case. And that's kind of why I asked, you know, it's challenging when you're put up against a certain stress events like that? I mean, can we be proactive about getting these introduced so we don't have to kind of grind through it like like you guys have had to do? Um, there's, certainly there's a possibility of other ones being created. 
but uh, if we can get the, we had the wheel created for the West Street, which we can now adapt to the sure. turn around. Now if we get this process done and we can pick out other neighborhoods, other areas, and they don't all have to be as grand as this. There can be certain characteristics of a neighborhood that might present well with the, I don't know if the right word is conserved, preserved, watched over, you know, so that something doesn't really trash them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry, you were going to say something? Yeah. Yeah, if I might. Um, Kathy Greenfield. I um, am currently the co chair of the 0167 Neighborhood Preservation, um, but spent three years on the CPDC, 10 on the Historical Commission, and three on the West Street Historic District Commission. So I've had a little piece of all of those. Mm -hmm. And um, I have notes to your, to your last question. I have notes from 2006, 7, and 8 um, in my own notes and minutes, um, I mean, on agendas. Uh, from Historical Commission where we talked about um, what other historic districts need to be created in town and we talked about, um, I shouldn't even name them now to get people all crazy. Um, we talked about High Street, we talked about Woburn Street, we talked about Summer Ave um, in that exact area from Woburn Street to King Street, mm -hmm. um, as well as a few others maybe in the uh, Highlands. Uh, and at the time there was a lot of stress on the on the commissions. The West Street Historic District Commission was barely staffed at the time. In fact, I think there was a warrant article at one point to, to disband them and give their duties to someone else. It just never made it to the warrant. It was hard to get volunteers in it to just fill the seats to get the regular work done, never mind to get historic districts in place, because that's a whole other level of work um, beyond you know hearing regular cases and such. So it's sort of always been a topic of conversation among the groups since the bylaw was passed in 2005, and there was just really never the manpower, you know, sometimes to get it done. And, and as Everett was saying, sometimes it takes a catalyst, um, you know, a, an imminent threat um, to remind everyone that it needs to be done. Sure. I always like the plumbing at the house. Yeah. You don't call the plumber until something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I've got to fix the roof, I've got to fix the roof, I've got to fix the roof, and then it rains. I should yeah. have fixed the roof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would point out, that the, sorry, that the public hearing that we had had 121 people on it. Um, and all, and I mean all in favor, as basically the committees presented the uh, a small PowerPoint and did some things we were answering questions. It got to the point that the questions were asked. I might fill in a few words, somebody might fill in a few words, and then the, the audience started to answer their own questions. And it was really quite, quite unbelievable. If you have a chance to watch it on YouTube, it's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Well, all the, all the uh, town meetings are now on YouTube. That's where RCTV posts them. It's, uh, it was pretty incredible to sit there and watch for an hour, hour and a half as they they kind of answered their own questions and came up with ideas about what might happen, could happen, should happen. So this grass, grassroots movement was pretty impressive. See it come together so quickly in the organization that kind of surrounded it. The other thing Lots to be proud of. The other thing that's very supportive of it, the West Street Historic District, there are maybe seven to ten signs on the West Street Historic District for creating this other district. And I think that's a real plus. They are ended up. They're under the restrictions now, if you would call them restrictions, or the, the uh, current bylaw, mm -hmm. and yet they're saying this would be good for them too. That's pretty powerful. Absolutely. If I may, yeah, uh, please, Virginia. Virginia Adams, a member of the West Street Historic District. Um, what we're looking for tonight is uh, some sort of a supportive statement that uh, is required under the um, establishing uh, the bylaw. So um, we have to include that in our final report. Okay. So far we have uh, basically the uh, bylaw committee voted four zero uh, for in favor and opposed. Uh, selectmen the other night uh, voted four zero when one was not present. Did you get a chance to join the problem? So, 
I'm looking at the bylaw, right? The seven point three is that what the West Historic District Center? How how does this? How would control of this um, district merge in with the control of the West Street Historic District? And is it, it just adds on another district by name? Um, I think under the warrant article, I listed out and it changes and puts on Appendix A one and then Appendix A two, which are the two district maps. Um, I think that's about all it really does. It operates in the same format, um, and it'll be operating out of the out of the West Street Historic District. I think down the road, I think what Reddy will probably want to do is change it from the West Street Historic District being in charge of the West Street Historic District and the summer up as to Reading's Historic District Commission being in charge of the two districts. Otherwise, it's falling under the West Street Historic District name right now, commission right now, but I think eventually it will change. And we have talked about that a little bit. We just then we want to do this in simplicity form to get it through and then talk about how we can manipulate things. That's not, that's not the right word. Do things so it's better. Sure. So would personnel need to change? Meaning would you need to have representatives from Summer Ave join the West Street Historical Commission? And no, that's certainly a possibility. Um, it would be wonderful. Uh, we're actually down a person right now. And uh, we have a uh, slot, which is uh, uh, alternates that can come in. And those alternates in our committee uh, commission can be voting. If somebody else is absent, they can step in and vote. Um, there's quite a bit of paperwork that's involved, uh, the way it's currently set up. Um, as Kathy mentioned, the regular routine is enough uh, for the volunteer guard, as you all are volunteers. Um, but then when you add all this paperwork and the process of doing it has been a lot of work. Yeah, I'm sure. So, and there's a learning cycle too where people, if they were younger, became on as alternates. Um, they would learn how it works and what the different certificates are, uh, certificate of appropriateness, uh, application of um, non-applicability, um, disapproval. <laughs> you know, there are different ways that you would learn to realize how the bylaw operates, I guess, is what's needed. If I may follow up on, um, in the <coughs> establishing local historic districts, the final report, it says, following the public hearing, which we've done, um, the study committee prepares a final report incorporating, where appropriate, the comments and recommendations from the planning board Massachusetts Historical Commission and the community. So that's what we would like to, so that we can incorporate into the final report that you are, um, you recommend this. So we would just have a vote recommending it yeah. for town meeting, okay. And any other input that you want for you? Um, sure. Anything else, John? No. Nick? Dave? No, I'm in favor. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're all in. Well, I'm in favor myself. <coughs> well, I'm actually a sucker for it, but that's <laughs> that's a, that's a different a different uh, issue. In my family, have been uh, a succession of historic houses. Oh, okay. So yeah. So this hits home. So do we have a motion? Um, move that the CPDC um, applaud the local, the Summer Ave uh, Local Historic District uh, Study Group and recommend the adoption of the uh, Summer Ave Local Historic District uh, to the uh, Reading Town Meeting. All those in favor? All right. Well, thank you. And good luck. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. So let's go back to the first item that was on the agenda, which was request for minor modification to the approved site plan of 87 Walker's Brook Drive, the Shell Station, and Dunkin' Donuts. Gene or Jesse, any overview or introduction? I think it's pretty straightforward what they're trying to do here with the lighting. This is they, just... Um, oh, yeah, sorry. they email. They, they actually had submitted an application directly to the building department for changing out the LEDs, and um, the building department informed us um, with the understanding that it recently went under site plan review. So really this is the canopy lighting under the canopy structure at this point only. Uh, they, it, they are possibly thinking of doing future upgrades to LED um, in the future, but at this point it's just the canopy lighting. Um, that they want to switch out. So um, in your packets, I provided the lighting specifications and the previously approved lighting plan. I did email um, Nick to get his, his thoughts on, on interpreting the, the data sheets. Um, and it appears that there'll be actually less of an impact on, um, on the foot candle information. So, um, but I did want to bring it to the board just to inform you and sure that you guys are aware and approve the modification. Um, so I, I, I think this is good, but I'd like um, you guys thought on it as well. Um, in the past on a number of these gas station um, uh, canopies one of the problems that we've had is that the lights that they um, that they've installed lights not recessed into the canopy you know not shielded really and and hanging um, hanging down it looks to me and I don't have I don't do not recall what um, what they have on on this um, I mean, these hang down an, an inch, so in, in, in essence, they're flush. Um, and since they're LED, I would think that the, the um, sort of that, that glare, that direct um, uh, glare that you get from, from uh, the typical uh, canopy wouldn't be there, but is that just... I, I don't know because I, I haven't really seen them in, in action. Yeah, so the, the old ones relied on the bulb pretty much to do everything, and that's why they were they were dropped down, right? So the yeah. bulb is hanging down, and the light comes out of it in almost like a flattened teardrop kind of shape as far as how it spreads out. Yeah. With LEDs, because you have a much smaller light source, you're using the ref the the actual reflector, the the um, the lens. So it it's got all these like little facets in yeah. it to help it go in certain directions, and they try to, these especially, try to keep it to come down, and then it spreads out much, much less. And yeah, it is pretty flat. It's pretty flush. Because the whole assembly is much it's less. Right. right. Yeah. So it's not sticking up in the, um, if, if you've ever seen the top of these, it's pretty much just a big old bathtub. Yeah. So the snow will build up in there, and it's not great for all those things. These things are pretty compact. It looks to me like from the from the photometrics that they did that they're getting exactly that. They have the hot spots right underneath the lights and then it drops off pretty fast relative to some of the other light sources and you know, on sites like this it's so hard to say what's happening at the property edge for real because there's so many other light sources. Yeah. Uh, there are the two trees that happen on the little island. And I don't know that having one foot candle at the property line versus a zero is a big deal on this particular site. For as much as that, you know, it's just a number that comes out of some calculations. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this whole street's all lit up to... Yeah. <laughs> So the reason why I was asking the <coughs> question wasn't necessarily on this one because it, it, this was relatively, um, I think, newer and, and um, but but just sort of to have that sense of how that would work on other ones. Yeah, I think it's nicer Which, to have them flush because you don't get that glare as yeah. you're approaching it. I don't know if they're adding the same number or if they're adding more. But again, the number, the foot candle number, 
is in line with what we would expect for the site. I believe they're replacing it. It's one to one. One for one, yeah. That would be most economical for them because the wiring is already there. Mm -hmm. They don't have to cut anything really. All right. Do you want to take a look at the? Um, it would be great if there's other ones in town that would do this. Yeah, right. I think they'll all get there because yeah. the price of these is coming down and it's going to save them a lot of money. These things burn all day. Yeah. And they last forever. <laughs> so, we need a. There's a draft decision on page four of your packets. So. Move that the CPDC approve the uh, minor modification for the lighting at 87 Walker's Brook Drive. Second. All those in favor? Next up, Redding Woods, update on the occupancy condition requirement number seven on shuttle service. So this one is, um, goes back to, way back to when we um, issued our site plan review decision in April of 2011. So in that decision, we asked that the um, developer consider running a shuttle and so um, there was a provision that final occupancies would be attached to that uh, so that it was a milestone um, and it didn't get forgotten about um, so Pulte went out and did some surveys and they're included in the material um, and the long and the short of it is um, there isn't a whole lot of interest for the shuttle service. Um, certainly there seemed to be a strong sentiment if they were going to run a shuttle, they didn't want it to come out of their condo fees. That if, you know, people needed it, they would pay for it, so it would be user-based. Um, so what we thought is maybe it's time to come back to this and give this some thought. Maybe since it's not fully built out yet, we still need to get some more data with more people living there before we can really know if this is an idea that will work or not. So that's why it's before you. <laughs> well, the, I mean, I notice in the, uh, the materials that the we tied it to the, the uh, Smart Growth District. Correct. Uh, perhaps because we had some more leverage there, but the from a practical standpoint, I would expect it to be more of interest slash more important with the the uh, senior housing, the age restricted housing, mm -hmm. which is currently still under under construction, and it, it would seem to be that a reasonable thing to do in the interim would be to uh, basically move the tie from the, the Gateway Smart Growth to the, the COO for the, um, the remainder of the, the residential properties. Basically revisit it. Mm -hmm. Right now we are at um, starting occupancies for the first senior housing mm -hmm. building and the foundation and building permit has mm -hmm. been issued for the second one and then there's three additional ones in the right. final sub-district so that's where we stand right now moving right along yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're way ahead of schedule yeah right remember they had mentioned they expected something like eight years well i mean initial was like nine years a nine-year build plan
And they did bring up other alternatives like ride sharing and that kind of thing in the interim. Yeah, they met with um, they met with Mass uh, representative from Mass Rides. Mass Rides, yep. Um, to go over what programs they offer, the new ride program, um, and there's like the emergency ride home, but those are usually tied to employers. Um, so he didn't feel that that was really fit, but he was going to look at implementing a like a carpool program mm -hmm. for the residents back and forth to the depot because it does seem that there are such few that travel to the depot and they're likely catching one of the same trains so maybe matching those people up together is an option well the, the I mean in terms of, of destinations I mean the coverage that we would probably like to have would be uh, Redstone uh, in Stoneham to uh, downtown and the depot and because Redstone is where the M MTA bus or the Main Street bus mm -hmm. uh, reaches. Mm -hmm. I, th I think one of the challenges is that our, the parking pass in Reading is so cheap compared to other stations so the mm. carpooling option they may say well yeah, that's great. I can carpool, but I can also just get a residence pass and park by myself and have my car there at its, it's convenience. If you have a car. If you have a car, correct. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think there will ever be demand from there for a shuttle, per se, um, for a dedicated shuttle. There's so many other options. Um, I do think that, that the residents there would be better served, um, I, I guess, uh, more economically served as well, if they could provide sort of just what you say about committing to doing a, um, a TDM program, um, travel demand management program, where they do facilitate ride share and work with mass rides and really make a commitment to doing that um, as opposed to um, a, a dedicated shuttle and in fact if there is enough demand if things shift around so that there's you know suddenly a lot of people they are working in you know in Burlington or something then uh, <coughs> then that would come out of that I mean that would bubble up out of that but just the idea of a, of a shuttle between there and um, in the commuter rail station in Reading, I work w around a lot of commuter rail stations. I can't think of one place that that works. In Reading, th there's nothing special mm -hmm. about that location. I mean, it's not. It's not that. It's big. It's but it's not that big. Um, mm -hmm. So to drive that kind of demand. I would uh, I would suggest that we sort of let them slide on the on the shuttle piece but push getting into the getting a real mass TDM rides. program yeah. and a mass rides program TDM, um, TDM travel demand travel demand um, management um, so is that ultimately what we're do we have to vote on something for this well, we wanted to either revisit it, well, at least give the update, um, <clears throat> and where there was this milestone attached to the van service, we mm -hmm. thought we either want to modify the um, decision or put some kind of paper trail so that yeah. someone goes, yeah, sure. what did we ever decide on that? <laughs> Yeah, I think what John's describing makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if it makes sense to tie it to, you know, another milestone, or if you just want it to be ongoing. Well, right now, if I read this data correctly, they're telling us that of the 212 occupied units, there were 176 responses, 99 of which were silent. <laughs> so. Right. Half of the development, a quarter of that responded. You know, it's not even fully built yet. So, what happens when the rest of the units come online, and when all of those senior units come online? This mm -hmm. this 
could look very different. So I, I think it's something sort of in between what John was saying, that for now it looks like TDM is a better solution, but they ultimately should have to revisit this, you know, when the demographic changes. Yeah, and I guess the, the um, um, you know, here's the flaw in this whole thing in what they've done. Um, there is nothing saying that this is a shuttle service to commuter rail. It doesn't say that in here. Because that's that's not going to work. Shuttle to commuter rail. I could see, especially when the when the demographics change, a shuttle to Redstone, a shuttle to downtown, which was actually what we talked about when we put this in here. Right. But a shuttle to the commuter rail is not. It's. It, 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 I mean, it's certainly it's it's like a non-issue for the senior. Right. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it's, But I guess I, I guess if they create a, a have, as they say, a transportation coordinator on on you know that's part of their function, mm -hmm. and they're gonna. The thing is, they're going to pass the cost on in in the um, in the operating costs, anyways. Mm -hmm. If there is enough demand, they're going to try and do that, anyways. I mean, that's the role of that. What they try and do. There. Well, so yeah, I mean, w where we'd like to get to would be a, a a publicly accessible service with you know the opportunity for collecting fare. Uh, or resident pass. I mean, that's the because uh, it it should if we're going to to bother to uh, instigate, you know, that kind of a transportation, we should make it available to uh, anybody who can get to the parking lot. You know, the uh, real estate parking lot. For example, I don't know if I'm making any sense. No, I know I, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you know the. Uh, I don't know how to how to get there <laughs> administratively, but. Uh, so. So where are we stand in construction right now, like I mentioned, we're on the mm -hmm. second age restricted buildings. There's three more. I don't know if you want to do like a check-in point at the occupancy of the third age restricted building. At that point, there'll be, there's 36 units um, per building. So we'll have an additional 120 residents units mm -hmm. occupied. I don't, or we could wait until the completion of the project, but sometimes doing that is, is a little bit more challenging on our end for the final completion. Leaving it to the end it can get a little stressful. When is third phase? When is it scheduled to The third wrap building? Up? Yeah, the third building. I don't know if they've started that sub district. What is that mm. sub district? D? Yeah, I don't think they have. Yeah, they haven't started that one yet, so I mean kind of seems as good a milestone as any have right. them work on this the occupancy won't be for a long time they even you know I don't know if yeah. they've even really started the site work yet on that portion so there is still some time for them to flush out whatever they they need to flush mm -hmm. out but I think adding yeah 120 units right yeah um, could change that could change what the outcome of these surveys are well the but John's point is well taken. I mean, if we can uh, basically say, well, you know, for the, for now we'll trade the shuttle for the uh, demand management 
with a um, identified coordinator or a contact point. Yeah, they did. Who they did identify yes, that there is somebody. A, a site um, a manager, and they're having her be that transportation coordinator. Right. So and then. And they've reached out with um, Jane Burns of the Elder um, and Human Services, and and they plan on coordinating with her to give a presentation sort of on the transportation options mm -hmm. that are available to um, to seniors so that won't obviously yeah. cover everybody but you know a large group of those new residents will be eligible for some of those services so well we want we're we care more about having the, the transportation available mm -hmm. than uh, exactly who provides it or <laughs> how it's funded And they already committed to MEPA to have a transportation coordinator. Yeah. So they should are. I mean, that, that's not uh, that's not us. That's right. that's yeah. the state they committed. Um, uh, they committed to doing. Um, so they so did hire that person. That person will have that role. Okay. So how how do we formalize this? Should we take a vote? I think so. <laughs> Give me your best. Um, do we have anything resembling a, a proposal for a modification? Uh, I could, I could, yeah, I didn't draft anything. Um, move to amend condition seven of occupancy. For Reading Woods to allow for further, further refinement of shuttle service program until after shuttle service program until after well until well, until until COO basically C -O -O. yeah oh do you want to which milestone are you thinking third building or do you want to the first building in district D okay. sub district D so we have um, move the CPDC to amend condition 7 of occupancy for the site plan review decisions for Reading Woods to allow for further refinement of shuttle service of the shuttle service program until CFO for the first building in sub district D okay so move second all those in favor? Thank you, Jesse. Okay. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so um, wondering how I was going to go. All right. Keep moving. Subsequent town meeting logistics. Yes. <laughs> what a ride it's been. <laughs> <laughs> sure has. Um, so, we just had the pre town meeting earlier tonight, so it's cut off the presses. Um, we have one bit more of tweaking that we need to do before I get into the logistics of how subsequent town meeting is going to go. When we um, were working off of the old zoning, we had the copy that was prior to the changes we made last November. So it's not a problem because we can, we have a couple of pieces that didn't make it into the new version. The PUDRC and the um, billboard signs, um, they didn't follow until after we started working on the zoning bylaw a year ago. Right. So those didn't catch up to us till the spring and they didn't make their way into the document that CPDC approved public hearing. But they're in the zoning so it can be fixed through the motion. Since we're, those sections are only being moved, um, town council has every confidence that that can be addressed in the motion uh, but unfortunately 
those didn't make it into the actual draft that you have in your hand. So that's a bit of housekeeping that town council will take care of for us at town meeting. Um, and then I was telling Jesse, I've, I've had a couple people come to the counter and town meeting members and been very happy with the, um, the format for the color coding of the um, translation document. So hopefully that will be helpful in understanding where the changes were made. Um, the fourth document that we added after the continued public hearing just has a few more little tweaks in it that did that are not in the translation guide, but hopefully that's clear that, you know, because we had to make that print deadline mm -hmm. um, and then we continued to the 23rd, there were those few handful of changes, 10 definitions, and we reorganized some parts of administration, just moving the sections, and then a few things in the tables that we had to fill in, and then something about the flagpoles. So um, that's what's before town meeting for Article 8. Um, we're, as I say, planning on doing Article 7, which is the PUD, uh, and Article 8, which is the comprehensive update, um, together on November 13th. So if it, ever, if it all goes the right way, all the other zoning articles would be taken up on the 10th. Uh, all the other town meeting articles, sorry, would be taken up on November 10th. And then zoning would be on the 13th. And the order of how we think we're going to go, um, and there we have a draft CPDC report. So we were going to suggest that Jeff um, provide that report. Um, we may, and we were discussing this with the town moderator, we may dispense with the reading of the motion. Um, since it'll be on the screen and it'll be the, in the handout form, um, the moderator actually brought it up that maybe it's time to just stop, you know, you're reading it and then someone says, oh, dispense with reading of the motion. Don't even have the reading of the motions. Just have it up on the screen and the printed copy so everyone's clear what the motions are. And then go right into um, the rest of the uh, parts that we normally do, like CPDC report mm -hmm. would be given. Um, and then, like on Article 8, the bylaw committee would go next, and then the presentation. So presentation would be last. And on Article 7, um, same thing. If we don't do the motion, it would be um, the CPDC report, the bylaw committee, and the presentation. So and Jesse's going to do the presentation on Article 7. So that's pretty much the logistics. How do we, how does the presentation look? Are we, do you mind, can I take a look at it beforehand and sure. provide some input? I don't know if anybody else on the board wants to. Yeah, it's basically the one that you saw at the uh, public hearing yep. with a few more things. I've been working with Ralph and asked for some, um, some graphics and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to, I have the video of what is zoning. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Um, it's about a 10 minute video that um, place down in Maryland did. Montgomery. Montgomery, thank yeah, you. Montgomery County. Montgomery County did a what is zoning video, which is kind of hmm. entertaining. And we're going to show that as part yeah, of the presentation. It's embedded in one of the first and slides. It's part, it looked like it was working. Yeah. I think you tried it before. And yep, didn't I like think we it. got it to work. Awesome. So, yeah, it's about 55 slides. Oh wow! Back up. Mm -hmm. on your desktop too. Yeah, we do. We do a dry run that afternoon. Yeah. Is it a is it a YouTube? You yeah, you convert it to this thing Vimeo. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Can we ask <clears> if, <throat> if? Yeah, I have it both ways, so okay. I think it should be okay. Yeah, we can send the presentation around. And then, how did the moderator, 
I know we've spoken about this, but are we still going to stick with the original plan for how we solicit feedback, commentary, go section by section? Are there any questions? Are there any concerns? Move on. Is that still the plan here for? Right. So it's going to be one vote, up or down. Right. Um, after the presentation, the moderator is going to um, ask for feedback, and he's going to do it in order. Now, we're saying it, it's hard to say if you can, it's like how would they do the budget, but it's hard to say if, if something comes up in a later section and you need to go back to definitions, you know, sure. can't really prevent that. But hopefully we can get through and just start numerically and start with the definitions and go with the um, administration and so forth on all the way down. The way the motion is written is in that order. The way the presentation is done is in that order. The new bylaw organization, um, and then it's just take them in the number they come. Okay. If you if you don't already have it in the presentation, it's probably worthwhile to remind people that definitions are basically declarative they're not regulations that's a good point you're just identifying something yep and the, the actual zoning is separate and elsewhere mm -hmm. a vain attempt to uh, right. avoid the And what about, I mean, do we want to come up with a strategy for how we handle potential amendments on the floor that we may suggest? I mean, with the purpose, we got flat, we got caught flat footed a little bit. We could have easily corrected that, but I don't think we really felt comfortable getting up there and making or proposing a change. I'm not sure if we start going down a trail of a certain topic potentially potentially kind of not going to solve course how do we want to handle mm -hmm. that um, yeah. yeah it's generally a bad idea to make it up on the fly is there a possibility um, that you could um, if there is one particular section that is giving everyone's agita um, so as to solve to save the remainder of the <laughs> of all the work to do something to um, to sort of uh, okay let's not change that particular section um, and offer up that amendment. I, I'm just I, uh, there's a couple sections in there that people might get worried about mm. and, and submarine the whole thing. Um, so well. We, you know, I know you don't want to, but you, 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 you don't want the whole thing going down in flames either, so. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's kind of my point. I want to Because I agree, if you topic. start trying to do the, you know, wordsmithing on the fly and changing things on the fly, you're, you're, you're bound to, yeah. <laughs> bound to fail at something, right? The... I understand, but by the same token, making it too easy to drop something out is counterproductive. You know, there's the <laughs> we put everybody's put a whole lot of work into this thing, and it's not perfect. But April is around, you know, it's, it's on the calendar, and next November is on the calendar. And the opportunity for you know, making changes and so forth it doesn't go away. This is what we've got now. That's a good approach. So, are, but are you suggesting that that's how we described town meeting, or we kind of roll the dice on it, and if we fail, we have April and November? I think you know we we all agree we can go in and say this is better than what we have right now. But it's not perfect, and we're going to continue to make it more improve well, it. 
we need to be more, I think, um, assertive in the sense of that basically that we need this. We need these changes. We want them now. If there's something that that's, doesn't work out right, we'll come back. It's a living document. That's dangerous. Yeah. Hmm? That's dangerous. It, it, I, I got to say, if someone said that to me, standing up there, go make this change and don't worry, I'll come back and fix it later. I'd say, that, you're done. done. You're done. Nope. That's, I, I, don't, I, I think that's a... Well, I don't think we're... We wouldn't go in trying to no, 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 I know, I know, I know, but I think you'd need to be careful about that. Of the don't worry, we can fix it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that. But we're doing that already because we're. I mean, we're only doing the recodification of the whole list of stuff. I mean, we're only we're only going in with like you know half the bylaw. Updated. Right, but the, you're not changing things and then saying, oh, I'll come back and, and, and fix the things that I already just changed. If people are having problems with some of the new wording, I think the resolution would be, okay, let's default to the old, not Legitimate default problems. to the new and then fix it Legitimate later. Legitimate problem, though, if they show up and they're like, I don't understand this, I, you know, I haven't had time to read this, and that's just not fair. To right. everyone who has put yeah. time in and read it. Yeah. So those people, you need to defend it against that. Um, mm. There's the whole issue of severability, which is built into the, the code, and I think that needs to be explained. That one flaw in the code, the one flaw, something that we've missed, doesn't negate the, the betterment of the rest of the code, and that can be fixed. And we're constantly tweaking or fixing zoning. We're always in there with some sort of amendment. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't, it, it's really the way you present it, you know, they could just be, it's a weird body sometimes, they get very defensive if you tell them, if you tell them what they should be thinking versus them coming to the same conclusion. Right. So we, we probably should make them understand the importance that it's all under one article and that we really are just changing language on portion of it, the rest is just recodified for the future changes which are coming, uh, and that uh, it's an up or down vote, and, and it wouldn't be fair to just kill it because there's a small piece that you don't understand or don't agree with. That's where it starts getting crazy again, right? So then just make them understand the implications of voting it all down versus, say, having it function for a while and see where the where the errors are, where the changes need to be. It, it might be in making them understand that there aren't that many changes, right? How many sections are we actually revising versus how many are we codifying, reorganizing? That might put them more at ease. Yeah, I think that's a good point because um, the definitions, the use, <coughs> intensity, non-conforming, six sections. Yeah, and, but even even within those six, I mean, the, we're not changing the definitions; we're expanding them because we're missing things. We're not, we haven't been changing uh, substantially any of the use uh, table entries. We're just expanding with the, uh, getting more specific in the, in the details. You know, we haven't suddenly decided that S15 won't allow single family houses. I mean, there's, there's, there aren't any big changes in there. Even the sections that we have updated. There are substantial changes in other areas, you know, but the, it's only in, in a few, like perhaps in the administration, perhaps in the, the non-conforming and the um, specific, yes, it's the, one the, the bugaboo well, accessories. That's the one that's going to cause a lot of heartache. Well, it's going to cause a lot of discussion. We know that. 
Has already. Will again. <laughs> Yeah, how do we prepare for that? I mean, I think if you treat the public hearing as sort of a microcosm of what town meeting is going to look like, yeah, we're going to end up spending most of our time on that. And what can we do to get in front of that we already have that we haven't done already? I mean, perhaps we just well make them understand that the public input came from people who are actually using the code who yeah. are affected by it. I think that's. Mm -hmm. Who had a stake in that? Perfect. Not just town yeah. folk and right. uh, board members. These are builders and architects and, and and property owners who look at that and say, "I want to be able to do something," and the code's prohibitive or it's difficult to work with. And this would make it easier. We took a lot of those recommendations and rolled them in. All all the reasonable stuff. I don't yeah. think we. If we actually reject anything, I don't think anything proposed was completely unreasonable. Comments that we were getting. No. Yeah. So one of the slides says this is what came out of all this public discussion that we had, and key things were like the accessory apartments and accessory structures. You know, and uh, um, the non-conforming. You know, all of that was basically through this series of public meetings, public forums, stakeholder interviews, you know, all the uh, all the community-based input. We had a DRT. We got a lot of things out of the DRT as well. And so, um, yeah, there's one slide of this came from the public, and then these are other changes that kind of evolved. I mean, for accessory apartments, too, I mean, we based it on what Lexington's doing. It's a town that we kind of admire in some ways. And people know that things like that wouldn't just get shoved through without a ton of public input and resistance potentially. So I think that that could be an effective argument as well. And I think, did somebody talk to the town planner there? Did yeah. George? No, I did. Oh, you did, okay. Yeah. They didn't see uh, like an influx of any kind. And they actually allow much larger accessory apartments, up to 40%, yeah. the gross floor area. I mean, if yeah. I remember correctly, when we were meeting at the Pleasant Street Center, and I forget who said, we based this on Lexington, that caught some ears. People were like, oh, well, that may change my tone on this, because we're not going to, right. you know, it's not some other town that... Perhaps we don't <laughs> admire as much. I'm it's not going to name names. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's a town that. I think we can that's fair to say. It. You could say that it's not uh, an urban. Uh, it's not a more urban community. It's based on a more. Uh, more uh, well, I don't want to say similar, but certainly more. Certainly rural, suburban. Yeah, more suburban, suburban. Yeah, upscale suburban. <laughs> more of a community that's concerned about their property values and their development. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's well said. Yeah, to a large extent, they're they're they've got the same tensions that we have. I mean, the, because the limited commercial space, being heavily residential, I mean, et cetera. You think Nancy Toomey would get up and speak in favor of this? You know, it's hard to say. I I did ask about having, um, you know, kind of testimonials. Yeah. And the moderator wasn't real crazy about that. Um, I was thinking back to when we did the Smart Growth District and we had a couple of the property owners in the district speak on behalf of the change. And he said that was allowed because they were affected by the change. But to have sort of random people get up and... I was thinking about um, Jack Millerick, who owns the Dirty Doodle, because we heard from him a lot. I said, geez, you know, I had to go through the ringer to open up a dog grooming get a special permit because it wasn't listed in the use wasn't listed in the table of uses and this and that had to go to the zoning board and just to open a little dog grooming facility on South Main Street but we could cite that as an example we could mm -hmm. because that's that's a pretty good example to say this is a business we would certainly not deny anywhere listed in the table person had to jump through all these hoops that this doesn't seem fair that's what a lot of this recodification is about 
Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't worry about, I, I think that if somebody, say, objected or was starting to question the language in, that, that came from the public hearing, uh, like setback on accessory size or the height, height on the accessory buildings, I think people like Nancy and those people would probably get up to justify that change. Okay. Since yeah. they can talk right. to it about, they can talk to it directly about clients coming to them. Yep. Hey, I'm confident. I don't know what Cautiously more we could. Cautiously optimistic. I don't know what more we could do, really. I mean, this yeah. presentation is going to be over an hour long. So there's plenty of detail and plenty of content. Mm -hmm. And that's what they've asked for, right? Town meeting yeah. members said. There wasn't enough Give detail last time, yeah. So. <laughs> Be careful what you ask more detail, but within 15 minutes of the day. Pass out pillows and blankets, I said at the beginning. Let me get on an airplane. <laughs> well, it's going to be an adventure. It is. We did talk about maybe having CPDC and the Zoning Advisory Committee seated at the long table up front, just in case there's a need to kind of coordinate or, you know, I can imagine when we get into non-conforming, that might be something that, whether it's ZAC or CPDC might want to talk to or, you know, just so that we're kind of all in the same general area. So I don't know if that'll work or not. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, our work is done, I think. I know. It is. I hope. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah. so. There's still a lot that we got to work through before April, but. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah we got to get going on that <laughs> yeah. because. The warrant closes in February, right? Second and fourth Monday of the month <laughs> right. instead of Tuesday, Wednesday, I think Thursday. We need to have like a, a time of silence. <laughs> <laughs> just like a day. So, so just we're. Yeah, it's just a day. day. <laughs> Once we get through November town meeting, if we're still alive, we'll have to really put a schedule together on when we have to have things done because clearly <laughs> it's better to get it done long before. We should do the planning at Bun Ratties whenever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we take that as our cue to move on to the next agenda topic. Okay. okay. <laughs> planning updates and other business. Yes. So, oh, um, before, but are we good on town meeting? Is there any other feedback? Or? Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Um. So. We are getting some rumblings that there might be someone interested in another food business going into Quiznos. Mm. We're not sure. Where's that located? That's the one down by the convenience store, right in the center of town. And across from. Uh, that's a, that's across a key, from. That's a key question. <laughs> that they're probably not doing very well. Across the street from the from chocolate truffle. If you chocolate truffle. The rug, yeah. oh, the rug okay. store. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know there was. It's closed. Right? <laughs> A relatively closed, prominent right? location on Main, Street. on Main Street. They're closed, right? Quiznos? They're closed. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll see because there's a couple issues kicking around on that. Um, Macaroni Grill closed too. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the rental sign up. Yep. So we've been meeting with uh, Mark Dickinson and the Wilder companies to get an idea of what they're planning. They've got some things going on up there. And is that is that is there any anything inherent there in that location that um, uh, would keep it as a restaurant as opposed to a, another retail space? I think they would like another restaurant because it, it's that nice prominent end. Yeah. You know the way yeah. the retailers think they want this on this end and they want right. that in yeah. the middle and they, you know that mall thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so, so they would, th their, um, it's not, as you said, national, it's Mark Dickinson. Oh, yeah, he's also the yeah. guy that developed the stop and shop. Um, so they would likely 
try and push for uh, a restaurant or mm -hmm. something to draw people in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just wonder. Hmm. Yeah. Red Lobster. They're already advertising. There's no, no, <laughs> none of them nearby. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a good word in for Mark Dickinson. Oh, let's see if we can get a Trader Joe's in there or something like that. I think the EDC tried for a Trader Joe's um, at one point. We were trying but downtown, though. We were trying at Haven Street. No, I think when the RMV oh, went well, out, they that were was a supermarket. Trader Joe's, and they said, no, it doesn't meet their model because they have a location in Burlington. It's too close. Mm. Mm. And one in Saugus. Yeah. In Danvers. <coughs> so. I mean, that was many, many years ago, so maybe it's worth Mini Wegmans. Mini <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a trip there this weekend. I've never been to one. No, oh, they're fascinating. Yeah, I've mm. heard they're phenomenal. I've been phenomenal. into the one in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, of all things. Spe weird. Speaking of, re of um, uh, <clears throat> grocery stores, I, I got to say that it was, sort, it was pretty amazing the difference. Uh, if, you, if you view Lucci's as sort of a a um, stand-in for the old Atlantic, um, how big of an impact Market Basket really had. Oh, yeah. Because suddenly that place was packed, Lucci's, and it's mm -hmm. never packed. No. And that, re that reverse um, obviously happened at, at Atlantic when Market Basket came mm -hmm. in. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it's just sort of the... Even with the resolution of everything with Mark Basket, people are still going to Lucci's. No, or? oh well, I think yeah. I, well, Lucci's, I don't know. Lucci's has, has always had a, a geographically local. Uh, yeah, I mean all of the the businesses there and all of, you know, there's a lot of stuff in close range. Yeah, sure. You know, so their service area is is secure. Mm-hmm. Right, but in the same sense, it's sort yeah. of, a, of a local, little local supermarket yeah. as like Atlantic used to be. So, I used to work Just across the street, tear it up. A connection between these big supermarkets and the little guys yeah, is definitely sure. there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Maybe coming in December, mm. right? Yep. So our old Getty station is still dormant. Mm -hmm. uh, Perfectos yeah. is still bare ground. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, I have no idea. What There's people there every once in a while. Once in a great yeah. while. <laughs> we haven't heard anything from them. Anything um, on Bunratties? I was in there a couple, three weeks ago and saw the owner. I was in the uh, bakery next door. And I said, what do I tell people when they ask me what's going on? And she said, just tell them soon. Hmm. Walgreens? I haven't heard anything on Walgreens. No idea. So there's, you, right, you realize there's this um, trend going on, right? We just named four. Turnover. Yeah. Yeah. Walgreens. That building has such great potential with all that storefront, though. Yeah. As long as they don't block it up with, you know, dark tinted window shades or shutters. Yeah. <laughs> what do yeah. we put there? The Pilates business put their sign up on the well, side. It's great, the, doesn't it? It's awesome, yeah. Yeah. I worried about that. I don't know why. I, it's I mean, great. Even driving down Main Street, it caught my eye. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, look at that. There it is. And the, I saw scaffolding up in front of Family Dental today. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. They had a Pretty sure. They had a beautiful <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it went up. They haven't, um, they'll be starting construction soon, but they're getting started with the scaffolding Sweet. and the barricade there. Good. Mm -hmm. That's going to look nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Much nicer. Really, big, really nice. big impact. Yeah, it was good that they finished Mon finished his building first because then she was impacted by what he did and mm -hmm. now she wants to mm -hmm. replicate that. Mm -hmm. Now if we could just kind of continue yeah. that trend. Yeah. <laughs> CVS. <laughs> that CVS. <laughs> Can we have CVS move into the Walgreens? Walgreens? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong side of the street. Better parking lot. 
Well, it'd be a better store. The CVS does it. I, I, I got to tell you, just seeing the people going in and out, they, they got to do a business over there. I know it doesn't look great, but. Hmm. Well, they've got the back door. I mean, the back door. That's true. Which is it's easy. You're in and out, nice and easy. It's not a big mega store. Yeah. Um, Criterion is probably going to be appearing at some point. That's the um, the social service agency that's buying the house on Summer Ave. Yeah. Okay. So the lawyers are having. <coughs> We're, we're hoping to get a legal opinion from town council on whether or not it qualifies for the Dover Amendment so we know how to treat it. Mm -hmm. I think they're trying to meet the December 8th CPDC meeting. Does anybody foresee an issue with attending? That, that'll be the last That's one for the December year. December 8th is what? The Pearl Harbor Day? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> um, it's the second Monday in, in December. Second Monday, okay. Yeah. So we're... We're only meeting once. Yeah, so this is our only meeting for November, yep, right? Right. And then the 8th is our only meeting for December? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, ACBL Fall Nationals are in Providence from Thanksgiving Friday through the following week weekend. What is that? The... Uh, Duplicate bridge, oh. a national tournament. Oh, <laughs> I was like, the who? Gotcha. <laughs> do so. you play in it or do you? Yeah, yeah. Just, oh, okay. Routinely. <laughs> cool. Good Could luck. you watch that? <laughs> Would I? Could or you did? watch bridge? I mean, got, I can understand playing it. Oh no! I don't well, know. I, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, there may uh, be a following out there. <laughs> Well, they, there's a, doesn't include me. <laughs> there's a thing they call ViewGraph where you can watch watch live. I know. Yeah. <laughs> My question doesn't change. Oh. <laughs> Much more fun to play. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Mm, let's see. Artist is moving along. Yeah. yeah. They're actually probably going to be back before you um, for some modifications to the site plan. They're working out the details of the big retaining wall out mm -hmm. back. And I think they're going to have to make some changes to the site plan. So before they get started, they'll probably be back before this board. Okay. can't tell you when, but that's what they've told me. <clears throat> oh, the library. That's what I meant to mention. The library's temporary library is... Almost open at uh, Walker's Brook by Market Basket. They get their sign up, looks nice. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And when will they start work on the uh, the building on what is that? Uh, size? They've got they're still dealing with a couple of things related to the bidding. So once they get the contracts and everything awarded, uh, I don't know exactly when that would be, but Hopefully in the next month. Yeah. And has all the hysteria around West Street calmed down? Or is town manager still getting a lot of calls? Yeah, I don't know. It seems like it's, like they were saying, the public hearing, a ton of people. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about more about the, the road construction. Oh, the road construction. They he was saying that people were going nuts over that. Yeah. Still. Still. I, mean, I don't understand. Did they not understand the scope of the work? Because it's a, it's a tremendous project. Mm. Yeah. Just you know, inconvenient. <laughs> wow. Well, really have become spoiled, haven't we? Yeah, I guess we. Have. <laughs> I guess we have. Well, it's. I mean, there's a lot of traffic on West Street. That's there is. Good. I understand. Uh, most of it non non reading people. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not so sure salt is any different. The traffic I see in the morning and the evening on South Street, I don't think any of those are residents. A couple of us, you and me. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I would. 
tend to bet most traffic in Reading is in resi Reading residents. I mean, we live in a prime junction location mm -hmm. where yeah. people drive through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about that salon in? Um, Sola. Yeah. Are they moving along? They're moving along. Yeah. 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 They started working there. Is that? No, they haven't gotten. What you mean they haven't by finished yet, but they're moving along oh, with the construction. Okay. So I would, I would anticipate. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah okay. The construction's going. I don't know. Within a month, mm -hmm. will it be done? I don't think it'd be much longer. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Be interesting. Yeah. yeah. I'd be very interested to understand how they work out mm. and how the business works. Yeah. I don't know how that liquor junction is doing. Hopefully, they're doing okay. They haven't been open that long. Place is huge. Yeah. I was shocked when I walked in there. <laughs> like I was in a warehouse. And you were. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. True. <laughs> Good. Anything else? Nothing for me. I'm going to just knock out the minutes quickly. So, in your um, desk packets, I included a copy of Nick's comments, and then Jeff gave me some written comments. Yeah, I assume that most of my comments were probably already covered with Nick's. I did, there's a, one more change on page three of four, which is page 41 of the packet. Those are the 10-6 meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. at the very bottom of the page where it says, um, and would it not be good? It's actually, and it would not be good. So the it is in the wrong side of the wood. Page four of the four um, under approval of minutes. It should say amended as one word. Yep. <laughs> Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of October 6, 2014, as amended. Second. All those in favor? I have a lot of edits for the next, for the 1020 okay. ones. I'm not sure how they want to do this. If you guys just want to um, you want to go through them, you want to just give them a the guess, you want to look at them real quick. And they're mostly grammar, text. Uh, That's what mine were, yeah. And things like that. Nothing significant. I'm trying to think if there's anything in here that's, no, it's mostly like form becomes from. It's sort of typical autocorrect yeah. stuff that happens in here. <coughs> well, hand them over to Jeff. Thank you. Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of October 20th, 2014, as amended. Second. All those in favor? All right, good. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second? It's just turn. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Thanks, folks. Thanks.